Cut shot, comes in hard. I think the key is him coming in hard. So everyone's dug in, and then he just does a finesse shot at the last minute. That is textbook. Great he is, shot. He is, yeah, four of seven now, hitting 429. Started out last night five of eight air free. And did have a couple of those change of pace shots on that right side turn into kills. That's a kill for Voss. He hit zero last night at three attacking airs, the most he's had all season long. And so you got to feel like he's playing with a little extra oh, yeah. vengeance on his mind. I feel like everybody in Hawaii is, and Voss is, cannot be stopped in the front row. Great quick set. Voss, one of four seniors who traveled with the Bows to this match. So we're talking about senior night here. Three Tritons getting honored. Four Bows of the six seniors are here. <laughs> Schellinger is only a sophomore, so you're going to have to get accustomed to watching him a little bit more. And he's getting better and better with every match. You know, he does really good jo uh, good job with that outside set, using the block on that, and then getting out of the way. Nice tool. So look at this here. It is senior night. Andrew Boyle coming in. To, nice. to set, Gabe Dyer leaves. Boyle came in as a serving sub last night, number 18 in he blue. He got an ace right away. He, he got an ace right away. Awesome. He might be the best server. It's hard to say. And it, he was setting when they beat USC, too. So he's definitely. Finn uses <laughs> the foot. Got a good player and can, and, and can step up at any time. Fim used a foot last night. It didn't go his way, but he is very aware that that is a part of the sport. Alora kill off of Boyle first assist, and the Tritons are coasting with a four-point edge. And such a great turn by Laura. Oh, is sure not Fim's not the goalkeeper? <laughs> great play. The first four points of this first set went to Hawaii. You had the Jim Garrison hitting air, and then Thim had a service ace, another hitting air. Rosenthal came up with a kill as well, and you're thinking, oh, oh no, if you're a Triton fan, the Bows are really feeling strong. They've won the first four points, but whatever they were able to find in those first four points, they haven't been able to capture it since. Right, and you know, I think we're seeing Hawaii, they lost their glue guy in Hakas. Um, he is the one who holds them together when things go wrong. And you know, when they make errors, it's kind of like a string of errors and Wade kind of lets it happen. So to see if they can figure it out and then calls a timeout a little bit later than most coaches would. But this is how you learn, you gotta figure it out. And uh, I think we're seeing Hawaii just make some adjustments. Um, but always be feared of the Hawaii serving. As we know, their stats are the highest. Well, you spoke about Hawkins, yeah, dealing with the injury and what a presence he has been. Has not played since March 10th because of the injury that he suffered earlier in the season. And he was honored on senior night as the second libero coming off a of surgery. Obviously, we, we send him our best well wishes in a speedy recovery as he comes off that knee injury. Sakanoko with the reception. Fim on a combo play. Neusterer fooled the Tritons and that sprung free Fim. Yeah, good job drawing the block on that by Neusterer. And Fim just teeing off on the top of that block. Now Gabe Dyer is looking as if he is going to come back in for Andrew Boyle, who replaced him temporarily. What do you think about only playing Boyle a few points and then yeah, bringing know, Dyer puts, back in? He puts up maybe a little bit of a bigger block. Um, you know, knows how to connect with all his hitters. Maybe a strategy move there. 17 points for the Bows, including 12 kills for them so far. Oh. That one airmailed. Not even close. There's the precision that comes 
time to time with the power, and sometimes it's hard to synergize for the transfer from BYU and Sherfan. Yeah, that one I think he just missed hit. But like we said before, can't make those errors against Hawaii. Sherfan from the backcourt and a long range shot, which is handled by Todd. Tip from Finn. Schellinger rushes in from the backcourt. Here comes the joust. Fim up high. Rosenthal is in the vicinity, and they win the tight ball. Fim is so aggressive at the net. Love it. Not afraid to joust. And whoever pushes last wins that one. 3-0 scoring run for Hawaii has Brad Rostrader calling a timeout as Thim has been such a bright spot for this team. And you, you think about his story. Started out at the community college level. Yep. And his opportunity is now, there might have been some injuries, and he is maximizing this opportunity. He uh, puts full maximum effort into everything that he does. Such a smart player for his size. I mean, he plays like he's seven feet tall. Had 11 kills last night at 273. He's hitting 278 on the season. So we mentioned, we yeah, and we'll continue to watch some of the highlights here on your screen from Thim, but want to go back to something that's really important. Both of these teams are thinking about, as you see what Thim has done, and obviously Sherfan. But as you look to next week, you've got Hawaii as the three seed in the Big West Tournament. Trines officially the fourth. Who's going to be five and six? We don't know yet. It's all going to come down to what's happening right now between CSUN and UC Santa Barbara. And they split the first two oh. sets, and now CSUN in the third oh, is wow. up 16 up. to 11. So the winner of that match is going to play in the quarterfinals of the conference tournament next week, the Tritons. And the Bows will get the loser. Yes. Uh, so both of these, this is the dress rehearsal. Um, definitely need to get their lineup set and play with full maximum effort. Lots of effort as the bow block the things that Triton attack. A 4-0 run and a 20 all score. And a good team hustle just out of the reach of Trifon. Our third tie. We had 10 ties in the first set between these two last night. Sancho! <laughs> oh, oh, that was what? a late call from Patsy Malta. Oh. And Gabe Dyer, the captain, is going to go right over to her and have a conversation as he did not see eye to eye with that decision. You know, I feel like she called that late in her own brain, too. It's a little bit of a power tip, but I feel like, did it come to rest? I don't know. I think he threw it down. We're seeing that being allowed, I think, more, more yeah. than in yeah. years past. Yeah. It seems very pervasive with the evolution and where the, the collegiate sport of men's volleyball is going. But the Warriors keep it going. That's five straight points. They've got a lead. And it's Todd at the service line. Dyer syncing up with yes. Sherfan. That is the hit. He's up there. Use those high hands. Great swing by Sherfan. An eighth assist for Dyer, and Sherfan is five of ten, tied for a match high with Keone Thim, who's got five on ten swings as well. And also a great set by Gabe Dyer on that, going against the flow. What was Selcho trying to do there? I think he was trying to hit that back corner, but it looks like he missed hit that serve a little bit. Area one. Area one, misfires. Here is Thim, he had an ace. The second point of this first set, a thin ace. That's the only ace the Bows have had, by the way, in this first frame. Yeah. If you're going to call that and let that go, why didn't you let Selcho? 
earlier. Um, well, I mean, that was a two-handed. Yeah, and look at that. He's making sure it's okay with Patsy Malta. <laughs> um, I, I do think that that Selchos was a little stickier. But um, that one came out pretty quick. Lofting this serve long. Gives Hawaii a 23 to 22 lead after Dyer's mishap. They transfer from Lewis University. Kevin Calling playing in his 21st match. Four year starter at center for Lewis University, a native of Illinois. Sherfan with the roll shot to Thim. D ball for Todd. Pinballed around. Oh, that's and a right left. there to shut him down. A whole host of Tritons. And a nice block off the head of Rosenthal. And it looks like it rolled up Voss's arm a little bit. And that was the left. That second contact. Rosenthal goes oh, back geez. set in a one ball thunder to the surface for wow. Voss. What a his, back one. <laughs> his second kill on three swings, and that's our first set point in the first set. So explosive. Voss just exploiting that block. Great swing. Rod Rostrad are going to use the timeout here. Hawaii, they're looking a little bit more like the team that started this match, winning the first four points, to the way they're playing right now. Yeah, I mean, they are, they have so many offensive weapons. It literally can go to any player at any time. Tred Rosenthal is doing a great job finding all his hitters. So I think it's just, I think the only issue is sometimes in those transition plays that they don't capitalize on, but when they're in system, they are scary. They certainly are, and we've got a great crowd on hand here. And when you spoke with Anthony Scherfine last night, he said the crowd was a difference maker. Now, the way that the Bowl fans, and you see them there on your screen, the way they oh, travel, yeah. I, I'm not so sure there's that much of a home court advantage here. For no. the Tritons, it might actually be working against them. But sometimes, and Kirsten, you've played at the, the college level. When you know that there are more fans of the other team there, it Ooh, has yeah. a way of, of wanting you to play your best and picking up your game. Yeah, I've played in Hawaii. Uh, I played at Cal State LA, and I played against BYU Hawaii. And wow, those fans were rough. And, uh, you know, it's definitely tough, but it kind of fires you up a little bit. And I think there's a lot of Hawaii fans in California as well, so I think we're seeing them come out of the woodworks. Most of them are on their feet right now standing. Rosenthal with a set point up for grabs. Schellinger is blocked. Garrison on two. This is Schellinger goes high hands. <laughs> Got it down. Thim and Rosenthal looked at each other, and I don't think they knew which one was going to go yep. get it. They both froze. Yep. And Thim looks at himself, says, I got that one. And what a great aggressive swing by Schellinger on that one. A lot of on two play in that point. So we're going to play extra points in this opening frame. Todd is blocked. The coverage from Choi. Oh, jeez. Denied! <laughs> Silenced on the shot. <laughs> and a source of humility sent back to the Bows as the Tritons go from saving a set point to having a set point in their crosshairs. Wow, and what a block and seal of the net by Chirfan and Selcho. Awesome. And how awesome is the energy here? <laughs> For, for those who are watching, perhaps in I feel Honolulu like we are right in Hawaii. Now, <laughs> we are in San Chair. Yeah. No, it's it's great energy tonight, and I feel like uh, the Tritons have risen to the occasion. Definitely taken some notes from last night. Going to have changed up their serve receive a little bit. Look at the crowd. Yeah. How awesome is this for the the growth of men's college volleyball? Yeah. Absolutely. 
I like the aggressiveness that the Tritons are playing with tonight and doing a great job blocking as well. The Tritons were up 20 to 16 in the first set. Then they fell on hard times. They gave up a 5-0 run, fell behind 21 to 20. They saved a set point. Now they have a set point against a Hawaii team that, look, you think about what's important for them. Yeah. They, by whatever happens on the court tonight, there's still going to be a three seed yeah. in the conference tournament next week. But this is bragging right. They yep. need this win to help their cause if they're going to get an at large in the NCAA tournament. Oh, yeah, absolutely. They have to win this game tonight. And if they don't, then you'd think they would have to win out in the conference tournament next week at the Stan Sheriff Center. This is Jim Garrison. Oh, oh my goodness. That one was lost by a mile. Oh, little nerves there. And now you've got Sunoco back there. Oh boy. Arguably the best server for Hawaii. Doesn't have an ace yet in the first. He had three aces last night in the first frame. Oh. Training service errors. Sakanoko makes errors too. Man, this could go on for a while. So what does Sherfon <laughs> do with the Tritons owning their second set point? Um, first of all, serve in. <laughs> yes. And he, I, I know he's going to serve tough, so I'm not even going to say that because that's what he does. What a serve. Rosenthal runs it down. Leaves it off for Thim. Dyer looking Lars way. <laughs> the Tritons fight back, repelling wow. a set point. And on a second set point to their own, they've got a kill out of the backcourt from Laura to claim the first 27 to 25. That was a lethal play, and Laura is so good on that pick. That was a great play. There it is. The point that clinched the first set for the Tritons. Needing extra points to wrap up the first frame. The Tritons do it 27 to 25. It was Sebastian Laura's fifth kill that decided things, giving the team the 27th point. More on this first set momentarily, but want to honor one of our three seniors here. And right there, number three in blue, that's Gabe Dyer. Nine first set assists for him. And then, Kirsten, you talk about what he's doing defensively. He has three digs as well. He's been playing some really good volleyball tonight. He has, and he's definitely a competitor. Volleyball, obviously, in his DNA. He comes from a volleyball family. Uh, but like I said earlier, just really knows how to dial his sets into his hitters and almost takes it personally how, how exactly he can set them to be, uh, you know, big offensive weapons for the team. Let's go to where UH, where they could have used, and I, I bring this up because there's a lot of youngsters out there for UH. If yeah. you have the Hawkus out there, and he's available, yeah. that mature veteran presence, especially when hard times fell on this team late in the first set. How could that have changed the way that that first set might have transpired? Well, he would be their go-to outside that would just, um, you know, put the ball away and be creative with it. And, you know, we've got a freshman setter who's 17 years old and a freshman outside who just got on island four months ago. So it's gelling with the team. So I think it's that gel. and. Obviously, Voss is senior, but he's only on the court half of the time. So just finding that right combination of how to fire each other up and execute, especially in the transition plays of who's playing what, a little bit of miscommunication on some defensive plays between Rosenthal and Thim. So just working that kind of stuff out. Gabe Dyer. Hoping to work on a long service run here. He'll be at the service line to get the second set underway, right? At Sakanoko. Voss, a vehement swat. A no doubter of a kill terminates after the first ball side out. Yep, he is lethal up there and definitely the leader on his team. Kind of a silent leader, but definitely gets the job done. Two matches against UC San Diego last year. Voss had a combined nine 
kills. He's got six kills in the two matches so far against the Tritons this season. Defying gravity is Air Surfun. Yes. Trumpeting a seventh kill in that one, generating all kinds of excitement from the crowd. And I really like that combo play. Voss got faked out by Garrison, and Chirfan only had one blocker. Laura gets in a good serve. A D ball for Todd. He buries it in zone five. Laura has his finger up there saying, I want to look at this one again. But from my vantage point, Kirsten, I thought that was in. Yeah, it felt like, you know, that is kind of his spot. He likes those deep corners. Um, and that's another player for Hawaii that I feel like needs to step up leadership on the court. Oh, yeah, that was in, for sure, um, being another senior. Well, we are going to see a challenge. It will be our first challenge of the match. Tom Saunders, our down official, is looking over at the monitor. And I don't think it's going to take him very long no, nope. to figure out which way this ruling should go. Yeah, that was in, 100%. But when we're looking at that first set blocking-wise, 10 blocks for UC San Diego compared to Hawaii's seven. Really good blocking performance by the Tritons in that first set. Let's see if they can continue to keep that going. Here is what they're looking at. And yeah, that's that in. looks so pretty I, into me. Yep, that's in. Tom Hold six, Saund camera, yeah. get yeah. it. Yeah. And Tom Saunders is right there. <laughs> Trying to convey what he saw to Patsy Malta, the up official. Now they're straightforward. Yep, straightforward. Challenge doesn't pan out for Brad Rostratter. So his team has one left as of now, and the Bows have both of their challenges moving forward with two as they take a lead to to one. They won the first four points of the first set and playing our fourth point of the second set here. Sherfon is blocked. Now to Schellinger oh. loading up. Um. What a pick up by Thim in the backcourt. Dyer digs Todd. Sherfon. Uh. The roof was up. <laughs> An armada of bows. And he, Sherfon, runs into a blocking buzzsaw. Nice triple block. Neuster. Neuster, yeah. Sakanoko, Rosenthal. Yep, that's a solid block. All collaborating on the stop. There's a jump float from Voss. Garrison hits the back set and beats the block of Sakanoko, working it quick and upstaging the blows there. Yep. Good use by Gabe Dyer of the middles, getting them involved. Tritons are starting out at 62%. Oh. <laughs> How about that action? Little English on that serve. It seemed very Jakob Tella-esque, the, the former setter for UH, who did things with serves that are speechless, make you speechless. Yeah, that's a, it was a nice kind of cut serve as well. Good location. Rosenthal will identify Todd on that right side. That's an eighth yep. swing, and it will turn into a fourth kill, the team's 17th kill of the night. And, and they're back up by one. And a great set by Rosenthal as well, going against the flow on that one. Big hole in the block for Todd to hit through. How would you grade the way Rosenthal has handled himself tonight? I think he's great. I mean, it's, you know, when you're 6'8", the ball just comes from such a different location, but he, he moves so well for someone who's 6'8". And, uh, I mean, at 17, all he's going to do is get better. A little uh, smack talk from Laura. After he put that one down hurriedly from the backcourt, and I think Patsy Maltz is going to go over to Laura and say, hey, man, you got to knock that off. Yep, if you're going to celebrate, you've got to do it to your team. You gotta turn around. There is Patsy Malta right there. 
Patsy's going to keep these guys in line. She is a legend in the officiating ranks in volleyball, <laughs> and sure fun has been nothing short of legendary from the service line as he brings out the flamethrower. I don't think Chirfan has missed any of his serves yet. That's the difference. Yes, it's like the serving table has turned. Well, it has because the Tritons, as you see, Chirfan has two aces. Oh, He's got two of nice. the four aces for the team. Yeah. Yeah, he Bows, unloads on them. How uncharacteristic is this for the Bows if you're just tuning in? They have one ace. Yeah. That is it in the no, match. They had 10 last night. And the, the one ace was from Keani Thim, the second oh, point yeah. of the first yep. set. They haven't right. had one since. Catching the block was Zelcho as Schellinger got stifled on the outside. That's a second hitting error in the second set for the Tritons and nine for them as a team in the match. Yeah, that's a big block on that right side with Todd and Neusterer. Hawaii leads 6-5. They also lead in the blocking department 6-5. Sakanoko <laughs> says, look what I can do, revving one up at top <laughs> speed. Sakanoko getting the bows, their second ace of the night. Just unloading on that. A masterful display from the service line from Sakanoko. Goes to Laura this time. Neusterer blocks. Schellinger got yes. it down. A ninth swing as he inhibits the block and paves a way through it. Does such a good job when given that right set of using that block. Going high hands. Great swing off of the block of Todd. Schellinger unloads with his serve. There is Todd, a roll shot running after it was Dyer. Rosenthal the dig off the attack down the line. Martin oh, Sheenas had a chance, that. trying to track it down. He knew where that one was going, but I think could not make the play. He almost overran it. <laughs> I think he was there, and I, yeah. Overran that play, saw it, but just couldn't handle it. Saw it coming, got it up. Oh, just didn't have his hands quite together. I want to bring something up to you, Kirsten, and that is the, the middles we talked about for the Tritons. They like to establish them early. But Selcha, one of the starters, is 0 for 6 with one hitting error. What are the Bows doing to slow him down? Um, you know, I think that they're keying in on him a little bit. I think last night they didn't pay any attention to him, and that's when he was successful. So I think they're, they're uh, you know, giving him a little bit more respect and attention at the block. And I, I think that since Selcho had that one throw call, I think he's been a little off and hasn't really gotten in rhythm yet. Or I guess it was a lift call, not a throw. Either way, here he goes. He's serving. That is his second service air of the night and the fifth for the team. Yep, those service errors add up. UCSD has to almost play perfect tonight. Beat Hawaii. A win for UH tonight would take them to 23 wins, which would be a tie for 10th most in program history. Laura and now Rosenthal putting it on a platter oh. for Sakanoko. And Patsy Malta says there was a there was touch. A touch. Yeah. So credit Sakanoko with a fourth kill. He had 10 a night ago, so he's creeping closer as the Bows have 10 points in the second. Yeah, and it looks like just off of Laura. And because, as Todd misfires there, Brad Rostrader has already used a challenge no. and it hasn't panned out. Maybe he's a little bit more, uh, doesn't want to burn a challenge as easy. Yeah, probably so be a little save more it. selective yep. with that. 
Martin Chanius, a bump set to Laura, turns it down the line. A seventh kill in a riveting fashion. And it's the team's 20th kill of the night. I really like, look at Laura with seven kills so far. He does such a good job in trouble now. I really have liked how his game has evolved. Is able to see some holes and really be aggressive. Laura, by the way, is five kills away from 200 on the year. Sakanoko finds Thim, and he delegitimizes that block on the outside that was spearheaded by the 6'9 redshirt sophomore Jim Garrison. Yes, he did. He knows how to go high hands. And get out of the way. Triton's taking the first set 27 to 25. The Bows had a set point in the first. They let it slip away. Laura kill Laura. number eight. Didn't have a whole lot of room to work with, but he makes do anyways. He does, he is so explosive and he passed that ball too. So nice job by him being able to side out on the right as well. Great set by Dyer and Laura finding an open spot on the court. There is Laura serving away. Thim make that Choi on the first touch. Sakanoko, a blazing shot, hit it fat, well off the court. And there was no touch seen up front. We're square at 11. I was looking for some hands on that one, just missed them. Our fifth tie, by the way. We've had two lead changes in the second. We had eight ties in the first frame. Just out of bounds, Voss off the shot as he went right into the teeth of that <laughs> Triton block. Totally into the teeth, but knows how to hit off a block and get out of the way. Very calm, cool, and collected. Which would be, you would have to argue, the disposition of one Guy Taylor who is serving. He did have an ace last night. Trying to do that again here tonight. He was looking for one. He was. Here is Jim Garrison. Rosenthal, high ball behind his set. Lore on two. <laughs> Who saw that coming? Not me. I was like, wow, he's running in there to set that one. And wow, two ball. Hey, when you're on, you're on. Triton's lead in our third lead change of the second set. Garrison <laughs> and the finish <laughs> at the net. Sherfon up work after Garrison is redeeming himself from the service line. You remember in the yeah. first set, he airmailed one he that did. went to the third row. Yep, kind of unorthodox, so it comes at you a little different. So different kind of spin. Oh, geez. Oh, it went back and hit Sakanoko is what oh, they're it saying. Did. Oh, wow. You know, honestly, it happened right in front of me, but it happened so fast, I guess I blinked. Triton's in the first set of the media timeout. They let 15 to 12. History repeating itself up 15 to 12 in the second. Sebastian Laura has 16 swings. He's got nine kills for the Tritons, and they're up 15 to 12 in the second set. For Kirsten Olsen, I'm Brian Fenley. There is Laura. 16 swings tonight, 17 last night. Why is it that they keep going to him, and is he delivering or what? Well, he's super explosive, and you know what they say, you gotta feed the beast. When you're hot, you're hot, get him the ball. He's He has a really good court vision right now. Oh, and now we're looking at Chaz Galloway getting into the game as well, but Laura's got a hot hand tonight, so Gabe Dyer's being doing a good job finding him wherever he is on the court, setting him on the right, setting him in the pipe. He even hit an on two ball and took a ball away, so. That one just long. By the way, Galloway is in for Sakanoko, who is, is hitting an uncharacteristic 
in the negative 083. Mm, yeah. And they're going to look at this one, I believe. Really? To, huh. to see if that serve was in or out. I thought that was out. Yeah, Chaz Galloway, a senior, um, you know. Maybe they need a more, little more leadership on the court, just a little bit something different, got to change something up. The two challenges that have happened have been because of line calls. Mm. So we're going to have that happen again. Tom Saunders is looking at the monitor where he has access to a variety of different angles. There's the, the oh. serve. Oh. So a piece that painted piece. the back line? I'd say painted the back line. Wow. I, I thought that was out. Bolt six would have got that. <laughs> <laughs> We're about to have a ruling. So it's out? I am I'm confused. Lost. Me too. <laughs> So the line isn't in? <laughs> I mean, I honestly thought it was out I, I, from my eye, but watching that. It's on the line. Yeah, oh, I think we forgot who's on what team here. Yeah. So did he just signal in the wrong direction? Yeah, maybe he got right and left wrong. I don't know. It happens. It happens. But when we're driving the, the, the car signal left or right. Sometimes yep. I, I mess that up. Yep. Maybe you say someone's name wrong. Is that it? Oh they my God. took some time. Patsy Malta. Is and Garrison Tom Saunders, still serving? He is still <laughs> serving. Oh One immaculate service run. Uh, has he ever gotten two aces in a row? I think we've hit a record for this him right now. This has to be a record. Although, and I, I would love to talk to you about how he's improved as a server. Scherf on the swing, that would be his 17th attempt. That's Galloway oh. went off of his head and ricocheted off and on the other side. Selcho looking for a first kill. It's not gonna come. Oh, Built wow. they go, centering it in to the redshirt sophomore. And Selcho, after his first eight attempts, went without a kill, finally, Converts. Wow. I, I don't even know what to say right now. Great play by Selcho. Finally getting getting his hitting going. It was a slow start for him, but let's go to, to Jim Garrison for a minute. Oh, because my goodness. I, I would love for you <laughs> to break down his mechanics okay. with his serve and how he's not just going with a, a simple jump float. There's a little bit more umph yep, attached to it. It's kind of a it. hybrid. It's a hybrid. Um, he's not getting a clean top spin on the ball. It's kind of like a weird side spin, which is probably something that Hawaii hasn't seen a ton of. It comes at you at different speed. He's doing a really good job moving it around as well, obviously, when he's hitting the back end of the line. So just kind of throwing a wrench in the system of Hawaii's passing. There he is. He's, <laughs> he never shows a whole no. lot of emotion out there. No. Stone cold. Is there a benefit to having that kind of demeanor on the floor? Uh, well, you save energy that way. Um, you know, you don't exactly hype your team up, but hey, he's hyping him up with getting two service aces in a row. And he's still serving. I think this is his fifth serve. Well, it is. And he's making up for that one that he, he missed in the first set yeah. for a set point. Yeah, for set point. And then it was a second set point for the Tritons to secure the first set, 27 to 25. That's Galloway. He's got his first kill on a second swing. Rosenthal finds him on a 19th assist, and that puts to an end a 7-0 scoring run for the home team. Yep, a nice tool off the block by Galloway. Tritons against nationally ranked teams this season. Five wins and 12 losses. Scherfon down the line, and covering the line was Joy. Galloway 
brings something special with a rocket on the left side going angle. Yep, he's another high flyer. Knows how to move the ball around. Hitting hard angle on that one. A native of San Diego, graduated from Del Norte High School, which is only 16 miles away from this facility. A miss too low of a there set from on that one. Yeah. Selcho. Tritons block Galloway this time. There is a tight ball won by the Tritons. Galloway hard against a double block. Schellinger looking for a fifth kill. And now a back set for Todd Ooh, on a 12 swing. Sick. The put away <laughs> for Schellinger. <laughs> Take a bell. Oh, you know, I think the thing that I like the most there is Dave Dyer's dig. And um, who was that that stepped in and set that one? I missed it was that a one. Boyle. Oh, it was Boyle. Evan Boyle had the Yes, the and Boyle set. stepping in on that second ball, setting the ball. I think Patsy Malta is having a little talk with Gabe Dyer about the, the celebratory reactions from the Tritons, maybe. Is that it? Okay. When well, you have such excited. an emotionally Sorry. draining point. Yeah. Sometimes you don't even know what you, you do. Yeah. You can't fault the guys, no matter what side you're rooting for. Yeah. You're going to expend energy, and you're going to have to release some of that after something like a heart-pumping point that brought yeah. so much behind it, as that serve had a lot behind it, and long from Scherfan. Yep, but, you know, as refs do, they need to keep things under control so things don't get out of hand, so it's a constant reminder. Tritons have lost their last four matches. They're three and six in conference play, and they are one and two in matches played on Saturdays. Todd bears the swing and cannot control it cleanly on a Scherfon eighth kill. Half as many as he had last night, reached 16. Yeah, nice control, high hard swing by Scherfon. The big difference. In set two has been that 7-0 scoring run. Yes. For the Tritons, Jim Garrison, the architect behind that. Yeah, who would have thunk it? <laughs> Not me. Kevin calling back in. He played all four sets last night as a serving, serving sub. Laura has a 10th kill. A methodical put away, everything seemingly in rhythm in serve receive from the home team. Yep, he is definitely in rhythm tonight. This is, of course, the second meeting between these two this season. When they met for a second time last year, it was a win for UH that gave them a share of the Big West title. Now, mathematically, the Big West regular season title. Now, mathematically, they are locked in to that third seed in next week's Big West Conference Tournament. The Tritons are at the four position. <laughs> and what could be the reason for the delay here? I don't know. Not really sure. A lot going on. Brett Persley coming in for the first time. That one, a tough serve to handle. Oh. Schallinger playing good defense. Ratatats off the block. The Scherfon shot. Todd unloading. Good block touch, and oh. Schellinger goes wrist oh. away. Thim recovers, <laughs> and Foss keeps it going. Scrambling Rosenthal, IDs Thim. Oh. Hard so charged smart. into a double block as he dices it up and wins the hard earned point. Yeah, there's definitely a wet spot on the floor. I've never seen anyone use the block as well as Them does. What is it Just about it that he can do that he even at his size, it. yeah. it's unbelievable what he can do. Well, he, he knows it's going to be there, and I, I feel like he just he knows how and when to hit off of it. Such an elite arm. 
and high flyer as well. Yeah. Our last He's tie was at 12 apiece in the second set. Ever since then, the Tritons have led. They haven't given up the lead since it was 12 apiece, second set. Garrison turns and fires, and Thim runs into the post and can't get around to recovering it. Yeah, I'm surprised he's everywhere. Garrison doing a nice job in the middle. This would be Dyer serving at Galloway. Not a good first touch. He'd be the first to tell uh -huh. you. But a throttled finish from Todd, who deals out a laser beam to cut it to four. Yeah, I feel like they need Hawaii needs to get more balls to him. He's been pretty effective back there. Hawaii is hitting 360 in the second set. 11 kills, just two hitting errors. They had seven hitting errors, by the way, in the first set, and Thim <laughs> has his second ace of the match and the team's third overall. He goes hard and doesn't go home. Such a great serve, great location. I just can't get my mind around, Kirsten, the fact as you see Thim there, that the Bows, they had five aces in the first set by itself last night. We're deep into the second tonight, and they only have three, and two of yeah. them have been from Thim. Yeah. Yeah, I think that uh, overall Hawaii is serving obviously a lot better last night. Um, not sure why. Um, just service errors. Or maybe working a little bit more on location tonight instead of going for it. You saw the service errors there, that number on your screen. But if you're just joining us, first set Hawaii took the first four points. Things looked like they were well on their way to what potentially could have been a lopsided first set in their favor. But then what changed in the first set to give the Tritons some confidence as they chipped back away and got themselves back into it. I think it. it was their blocking. I think they made some really good plays at the next, and they just, they are transitioning balls better than I've ever seen them um, this evening. Um, just, if Gabe Dyer digs the ball, Evan Boyle steps in right away in his setting, or Challenger is. It's just very clear of, of what they're doing in transition, and I haven't seen this great of communication and quality of the non-setter setting um, that they're doing tonight. He brought up some really nice analysis there. So here is Thim with Hawaii 19 serving to the Tritons 22. A rundown from Dyer. Todd diving after it. And a free ball sent over. Opportunity Garrison. <laughs> I was going to say that was a little bit low of a set for him, but he crushed it. Well, what happened to the the ball handling though on the bows end there? Uh, you know, I think we're seeing where we're seeing on the Triton side a lot of communication in those broken plays. I think on um, the bows side we're not seeing communication. This is Laura. Free ball behind Rosenthal's head, sent back over. That is Laura. <laughs> a primal scream. Wow. He had the set clinching kill in the first and takes the Tritons a point away from wrapping up set number two as Charlie Wade issues a timeout for the Bows. And what we're seeing right now is that is the go-to play for the Tritons is running that big play that has been uh, successful, the, I think, the three times that they've ran it so far. And see, we're seeing Voss jump with Garrison on that one. Garrison a little more established in the middle. Just great play calling, great decisions by Gabe Dyer on the Triton side. So you talked a little bit about it, Kirsten, but from a blocking standpoint for Hawaii, what can they do to not leave themselves so vulnerable where you've got guys like Laura in the backcourt hitting attacks with nobody blocking, nobody yeah, up? Making better decisions. Um, late, quick decisions is what they need to make. 
and uh, you know just read a little bit better. But you know, hats off to Gabe Dyer. He's doing a good job of moving the ball around and setting selection right now. Really taking a good look at the matchups and knowing my middle just got a kill. I'm going to fake set him now, think that I'm going to him again, and then set the pick. Dyer has been fantastic. 20 assists for him. Only a junior, but is graduating early, so he is part of the senior day festivities. Yeah, 20 assists and eight digs, and Sebastian Laura, who had the set clinching kill in the first, will be serving, hoping to end the second in his team's favor once again. On two goes Rosenthal and Dyer with the up. Schellinger too sharp on the angle, on the wrist away. What did you think about that decision has, has for he, him? No, bad, bad, bad <laughs> decision. Has he done that yet? No. Why would he try it now? Ah. Man. He's gonna he's gonna eat that one back. That's Gil, right. Yeah, Gilly Arme Foss has to keep this one in play. Still four set points for the home team. Foss dig Sherfan in the cutback. A second kill for Chaz Galloway coming in at an opportune time. Played only one set last night, and the San Diegan delivers for the Bows in a time of need. Yeah, smart hitter. Use the block on that one. Trying to take leadership over on the court. Dyer looking for uh. Schellinger <laughs> with only a Rosenthal on the outside. <laughs> <laughs> Got a one-on-one, -on -one and it is Schellinger. His sixth kill gives the Tritons a two sets to none lead. The last time the Tritons won against the Bows, two years ago on this court, and the Tritons took the first two sets. Will that happen again? We're about to find out. Plenty of time left. On to the third set we go. It is a two sets to none lead for UC San Diego against Hawaii. And the Bows next week are going to be hosting the Big West Men's Volleyball Championships. All six Big West teams will be there. The Bows are the three seed. The Tritons are the four seed. The Tritons will take on CSUN, the five seed. They just won moments ago against UCSB, the six seed now. So the Gauchos and the Bows will meet in the first round next week. To the highlights of what we have seen, through the first two sets. Yes, there has been some great serving by Keone Thim, but also some awesome offense by Cherfan. And of course, from Sakanoko, just so explosive. But the blocking at the net by UC San Diego has been the story of the night and the offense from Sebastian Laura. You brought up a couple of players for the Bows, including Sakanoko, who actually was taken out of this game by Chaz Galloway. He was inserted in for him as, as Sakanoko has hit in the negative. And a nice kill by Schellinger to close out that second set. The stats and not a whole lot of difference, although for Hawaii to say they only have three aces, that is substandard I, I, to what they're used to. It's like a complete role reversal of last night. So, same thing happened last night. Hawaii up two. You see San Diego comes back and wins the third. Obviously, we're seeing a really nice hitting percentage. Uh, actually, about the same for Hawaii and UCSD, but the, the serve is the... Uh, and the ace percentage is, is the big uh, differentiator there. And I would say just the transitional plays from UC San Diego, really capitalizing on that. And that's why we're seeing them with a, a couple more kills, really getting all their hitters involved. Big run in the second set with Jim Garrison at the service line. Commodeered a 7-0 scoring run. That helped in, in a big way. The Tritons get that separation in the second. They converted on a third set point, and it was a second set point in the first when Sebastian Laura won it 27 to 25. 
The last four times these two teams have played, the Bows have won. We brought it up. 2022 on this court in five sets. That was the last time that the Bows fell short. Yeah, I think we're going to see Hawaii pick up their serving a little bit. I think we'll see Chaz Galloway stay on the court as a leader, get his team together, rally them up. Be that high ball outside hitter outlet that they need over there. You can't help but look ahead as well. Obviously, we, we talk about the, the Big West Conference Tournament, but then the NCAA Tournament and what it's going to take for either one of these teams to get in. The first year they've had eight teams that will play, and it all is going to be at one site, so that is nice. Yeah. But you've got six automatic bids now, only two at-large bids. For the Tritons, it's understandable. They would have to win the Conference Tournament next week to get in. But for Hawaii, knowing where they stand from a pedigree and RPI standpoint, it, they don't want to run the risk of having to no. win it all next week as their only chance. That might be the case if they lose tonight. Yeah, definitely. They've got to win this. Sure fun <laughs> laying the smack down. I think he really raises and elevates the intensity of play on the Triton side. He's, you know, jumps so high and hits so hard, but I, I'm seeing a, a calming presence of him now when he steadies out his offense. Thim has been a calming presence for Hawaii. That's his 16th swing. Struts back to the service line. <laughs> Air free on nine kills. 16 swings, Kirsten, no errors. Yep. How has he done it? Uh, because he's a smart hitter. He's not afraid of a block in his face. He takes advantage of a seam and a hole when he sees it, and he rips that jumper. Sure, Fawn did not rip it. Change of pace. Rosenthal the up. Now Galloway, a roll shot. Schellinger will try to link up with Sure, Fawn. And dug up in the cross court by Choi. Foss, a whiff. Had his crosshairs on a set, and he could not mm. meet it with that swing. What happened there? You know what? I couldn't see it. <laughs> because I was right behind Patsy Malta, but a little miscommunication there. Well, you brought it up. Hasn't miscommunication sort of been the saga yep. for Hawaii as Voss quickly absolves his prior sins by tying it up at two? Yep, those broken plays. I feel like Hawaii's been a little silent on their side of the net. They come up with some great digs, some great touches, but just more direction of those transitional plays. Dyer will feed Garrison. Neuster, the only one up there in a blocking position, and Garrison intelligently works it past him to give the Tritons the lead, and he scores his fifth kill on 10 swings. His second service there. In the second one where he's hit it, I mean, I mean, that's to yeah. the side, but more long than short. What is it about the way he attacks the, the well, serve? Well, it's a weird hybrid serve, and I think he's still trying to get his uh, his his footing down and his uh, path of how he's going to serve that ball. So it's something that it changes up a little bit each time. That's a 10th swing for Selcho, held to just one kill. Chez Galloway illuminating on the outside, and he is going to have a lot of fellow San Diegans are rooting for him as it's a bit of a homecoming yeah. for him coming off the bench. Galloway, four of eight. No errors for him, no errors for Thim, as mentioned. How would you break down the way Galloway plays in Sakanoko? Well, Galloway, um, you know, a little bit more experience passing and experience in general. Um, you know, playing at Hawaii and system. A little more calm presence on the court. You know, both very high flyers. But um, Galloway, a little bit of, of a better passer and a less erratic uh, offensively. But man, Sakanoko, when he gets a hold of that ball and has a seam, 
as only a freshman, he's you know going to do a lot of danger, a lot of damage for uh, the Rainbow Warriors in the future. A lot of damage on that swing <laughs> that seemed to be part cathartic for Neusterer. Venting a little bit as he sends that one hard to the surface. And I think that's another thing that, that Rosenthal can do is just continue to move that ball around to keep the Tritons defense guessing. A risk that doesn't pan out for Galloway. Just brushes that serve a tad long. Neither team, it's our fifth tie in this third set. Neither team has a hitting error. A combined 11 swings between both squads. And that trend continues. Neuster has found something. Yep, he's got the hot arm right now. Good job by Rosenthal continuing to set him. Neusterer is three of four. There have been 12 different matches for him this season where he's played a match without a hitting error. I'm not surprised. He is one of three bows without a hitting error in this match tonight. Oh! Dyer! <laughs> offensively inclined! And now he's got kills in four straight <laughs> matches. Yeah, I think he does that like once or twice a set. That's about it. But good time. Nobody was expecting that. <laughs> Both teams are hitting well over 500. Oh. Sancho hits Todd. That was supposed to be a service here. And as Todd tried to run out of the way, he ran right into the Selcho yeah. eventual ace. That happens sometimes to opposites that aren't passing, that are trying to get to their spot. I've seen it happen to Scherfen as well. So what does Todd do to make that not happen again? Um, stay out of the way of that ball. <laughs> yes. Laura beats the blocker Rosenthal as he goes with the two-handed sizzling finish. A flavorful finish to say. Ugh, I don't like that play, but it was a kill. So <laughs> that's all I'm going to say about it. With that finish from Laura, he's got 13 kills. It's a 3-0 scoring run for the Tritons, and they've got their largest lead of this third set where there have been six ties all oh, already. Flexing. <laughs> and a man in Thim who doesn't miss a day to get to the weight room. Nope, does not miss a day. Doesn't miss leg day, arm day, any day, ab day. And, and definitely a high flyer and just so explosive. And his grandfather, of course, former UH head coach Mike Wilton. Garrison against the block of Voss, and that goes backwards. Now to oh. Scherfon. Fim at six feet. Got way up in the stratosphere and neutralized Scherfon. So that's the one. When he has a mismatch of the block, he needs to go high hands and go off Fim. But Fim, hey. Way to hang in the air and block that ball. There's Rosenthal. That one is well long. 6'8". Eight. eight inches taller than Thim is Rosenthal. Eight? Wow. Yeah. Eight inches. Well, they're standing right next I, to each other right are. there. Yep. You can see that there I is just, quite I the had to size disparity. Yeah. Eight inches. Dyer. Has a double-double. 25 assists and 10 digs. Vaughton oh, Chanis too hard to handle. On a line swing for Thim, who is playing out of his mind right now. And 6'8", setting six feet um, and finding a way. How hard is that when you've got a tall setter trying to find you know, a man like that who's yeah, six it, feet? I mean, it just shows the athleticism of both players um, being able to adjust and know what both of each other needs to be able to kill the ball. Galloway knows exactly what he needs to do to kill a ball. He is five of nine, hitting 556 off the bench. Yep, smart swing by Galloway. Using the block, hitting that hard high line. 
It's Hawaii's first lead since they were up 6-5. Boyle recovers. Sure oh. from Dyer. A 26 assist from Gabe Dyer, who is showing out on his senior night. Love that swing by Cherfin. High hard angle. Nice step by Dyer. Right inside the defense. Nine ties already. Oh. And breaking a tie <laughs> is Voss. Gives his team the lead again. It's the fourth lead change in the third frame. And Voss and the Bows are hitting 371 in the match. Mm. Mooster feasts on the misplay from Boyle. And it wasn't coming in that fast. No, it, so it, it, what would Boyle need to have done differently there? Move his feet. <laughs> um, that was a good serve. That is, this is the beauty of the jump float, is you can't really tell when it's dropped, going to drop because it doesn't have any spin on it. Buries that ball is sure fun. Getting well yeah. over 200 in his 11th kill. That is six off of his season high as he quickly is approaching that. Cherfan doing a nice job. Oh, and he hit the line too, my favorite. What? A fourth ace for Jim Garrison. Hey, uh, this is how I feel about Jim Garrison's uh, hybrid jump float. If it weird work sometimes, and uh, you don't know if it's coming at you, if it's coming, it's like a side spin. I don't think he knows where it's going to go. The Bows know where they're going to yeah. go with that attack, and it's Todd. He's been quiet as of late. Need to get him going. Yeah, definitely. Seven of his 15 kills last night were in that fourth set. He also had the match clinching kill. And he does such a nice job of hitting that back of the court. But what he usually does as he misses there, it seems more often than not, that he likes to go cross court. That time he changed the tune and went down the yep, line. He did, he did. He saw that open, that was a, a great swing. Definitely open. Number 13, serving at a 13 all third set score. Bringing the heat, going at them. Oh. Laura digs Galloway. That's hard to do. Thim oh. can't <laughs> pick it up cleanly. Wow, what a dig by Laura. And Vata Shane is just stepping in and setting that ball. This is the, the broken play that I'm uh, seeing of the Tritons right now, that they're just uplifting each other. Great dig by Laura. Vata Shane just steps in there, no problem. Bam, nice swing by Schellinger. So would you say the Tritons are playing better in out-of-system yes, situations than the Bows? a thousand percent better. Oh. Combination play. Mooster yep. jumping as the decoy, and that's Galloway finishing the job. Still without an error Smart is play. Galloway on his sixth put down. It's a 12th tie in the third as it's 14 all. And that was such a smart time to run a combo play, change it up a little bit. Well, Laura had to reach back to get that opportunity to cross. <laughs> Selcho flexing and looking right at that bicep. That looks pretty defined if you ask me. Yeah, and how many blocks is that for? Quite a few blocks. Well, it's, it's going to be six total team blocks for the Tritons. And yeah, we see it. <laughs> we talked about them oh, not missing a day to go to the weight room. Selcho making a case for why he always is hitting the gym. For Kirsten Olsen, I'm Brian Fenley. It is a one-point lead for UC San Diego, and there have been four lead changes in this third set. Twelve ties. Andrew Boyle, one of our three seniors, getting recognized Rightfully so on this senior night, a math.
major economics as well. A really good server too, Kirsten. He's smart. Smart player, and uh, he led the Tritons to a win against USC earlier in the year. He did. He had to step in for beginning the year. Gabe Dyer missed the first 12 matches because of an injury. So Boyle came in there and did the job, and he did it very nicely. Schellinger serving with a one-point lead. Make it two! <laughs> As he goes, bombs away! And a bombastic serve right at Choi. Who might have had the wind knocked out of him here. Yeah, I hope he's okay. Oof. I think he did get the wind knocked out of him. Poor guy, got hit in the face last night too. Oh. That's tough. He's waving off the, the training staff here. Quickly tending to him to make sure he is okay. I mean, both of these teams, Kirsten, they hit the ball so oh, hard. Oh, I know. So hard. And, you know, sometimes you have to dig and pass with different body parts and just caught that one a little high. Oof. I feel like it hit him right in the chest. But he's okay. He is okay. After the ace from Schellinger goes at Galloway this time. Oh. Tim blocked. And the roof was up on him, and they quell his shot. It's his first hitting air, first blip, and Selcho leading the cause on that net defense. Wow. Rosenthal at 6'8". He's been a part of a lot of blocks on the Hawaii side. We've mentioned him. He was our player to watch for Hawaii. His parents are here as well. We were talking about yeah. this, the, the athletic genes that he comes from. Absolutely. His parents, Mike and Lindsay, um, both athletes at Notre Dame. His dad played football, mom volleyball. Dad was an offensive tackle, played in the NFL for nine seasons. Um, mostly with the Giants and some for the Vikings. There There's they are. dad in the yeah. black sweatshirt and mom wearing the Hawaii sweatshirt. And mom was a standout volleyball player at Notre Dame um, and played in some AVP tournaments as well. And now she works for League One Volleyball. Let's go. Looking and forward to watching all of that unfold at the pro level. By the way, Tread's dad look like, looks like he could still play in the NFL. Yes, he does. And he also has, uh, Tread is, uh, has three sisters to play um, at University of Arizona, I believe. So graduated early. There he is. Like we said, there's dad looking on. Could probably still play. And um, probably couldn't be prouder. Yeah, but interesting thing about Tread is he uh, was signed for 2025 but got his is uh, was able to graduate early and yeah, said that, his hey, classification. yeah, it changed his classification, um, committed in 22 and was able to play. He said, I want to play with Voss, Hawkes, and Galloway. Well, we know somewhere back at, on the islands, Hawkes is watching, wishes he could be a part of that. And obviously we send him our best and a quick recovery. One of the key pieces for Hawaii. Thim back-to-back -back hitting mistakes mm. after he went the first 16 swings without a hitting error. And Charlie Wade says there might have been a touch. And Tom know. Saunders didn't see it, but they're going to okay. Hawaii Challenge for the first time, looking at the, the touch that may or might, may or may not have happened. Uh, yeah, I, f I felt like that was a pretty high, flat, hard hit. Um, we haven't seen very many errors out of Thim. Only um, two. No, only two, but in more recent times, yes. Um, so interested to see. Let's see. Oh, it looks like maybe Gabe Dyer got a right ring finger on it. I don't know. Sometimes it's hard to tell. What is your hunch telling you? Yeah, what is your first reaction telling you? 
Um, my first reaction is saying there was a touch because I feel like I saw his finger move. But I can't tell if it was him pressing his finger or if it was the, actually the ball hitting it. So let's take a look at it again. I think I think it got his left finger, or sorry, right finger. Oh, so you right. do think there was a yeah. touch? Yeah. So I think right there, I feel like his right finger, ring finger, touched it. And you think it's it's pretty evident? Obviously, it has to be indisputable that the touch. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I think Gabe Dyer wish he didn't touch it, but looks like he did. What does that do? Obviously, at this stage of a third set, shrinks the lead a little bit. You take a point away from the Tritons and give it back to the Bows. How can they use this? You know, the, well, they could take advantage of this and serve tough like they have, and you know, we know that they can, but they need to take advantage of this momentum. Going for way too much, did not need to do that, was no. Kai Taylor. Did have an ace last night, doesn't have one this evening, though. Andrew Boyle got in for a moment. Andrew Boyle coming in right now. Yeah, big miss. Big well, miss. Hey, we just mentioned Andrew Boyle. It was that kind of serve that he pulled off last night where it was the wrist away down the line, mm. the ace from Andrew yeah. Boyle. So he corner. did what Taylor wanted to do yeah. yep. with that last serve. Here's Selcho has had a couple of big blocks here down the stretch to help the Tritons in a big way. That's a 21st swing from Thim. Laura oh. is blocked, but it goes wide as Voss was there encompassing the shot but couldn't keep it in play. And I love all of the assists all over the board right now from the Triton side. It's just no question who is setting that second ball. Just very deliberate, good hands by everybody. Nice transition play. The Tritons, they have three wins by way of a sweep this season. And none of them were D1 teams. Rosenthal <laughs> denied a kill. Boyle beats them. Improvising at its finest. And a standing ovation. Many Tritons fans loving the energy, the heart, and the hustle from a man who is showing out in his final home match as a Triton. A heart and hustle is everything there. I think I saw three players absolutely lay out and a great play at the net by Andrew Boyle, pressing against that high flyer of Keone Thim right at the right time. Good heads up play by Selcho and then Schellinger laying out and Boyle using the block of Thim as a joust at the net. Charlie Wade uses another timeout here. The overall series history, we've we've said this before. It's it's rather one-sided. Yeah. 64 wins for Hawaii and six losses. That's the most wins against a single opponent in program history for UH. They are 30 and 4 UH in La Jolla. They've wow. won their last four meetings against the Tritons overall. But this one is looking like quite the challenge for them to try and I have never seen uh, the Tritons play this well against such a elite team of Hawaii as Hawaii. They are absolutely rising to the occasion. Every single player on the court is stepping up. Andrew Boyle, Sebastian Laura, Jim Garrison there in the front court for UC San Diego, and it's Voss Rosenthal among the men up front for Hawaii. Number five ranked team in the country in serious trouble against an unranked squad Ooh. as Selcho beaming that one. Hope was there, but just long, nearly had it. Yeah, it looks like he mishit that one, even stepping off the court. I think he got it on his wrist. So with Dyer coming back in for Boyle, mm -hmm. what does that suggest to you? Um, that they're just putting uh, 
Boyle in to block. He's a little bit of a bigger of a blocker than Dart and getting him some playing time on senior night. <laughs> How did they do that? A one down and a finish of epic proportions. Sherfon delighting on a grand stage. And Gabe Dyer running off the court. A bump back set and is able to find Sherfon and him put that ball away. Unbelievable. Down by five, Voss trying to make it a four-point deficit. They'll go to Thim, <laughs> blocked again! Sherfon has had his fingerprints all over this third set. Yes, his intensity definitely picks the team up. People rise to his level. Dyer serves at Choi. Oh! Galloway shows off the cannon. And Hawaii needs a heavy dose of that in their comeback hopes. Yep, that's a big swing by Galloway. Hawaii definitely needed that to get back in this, which I never thought I'd ever say. Well, the Tritons are playing incredible volleyball. There's no question that this is the highest level that we have seen from them yes. all season long. Finn with two aces oh, geez. has a third. <laughs> and what a time to go all out on the oh serve my and for gosh. it to work out. Finn is just incredible. Right. Brad Rostrader calls a timeout. Paya Vatanchanis, he's had some nice plays tonight. Oh, absolutely. He's one of our three seniors recognized on this momentous occasion on senior night. By the way, he and Gabe Dyer were the only guys that are on the team right now for the Tritons that played in that match oh. two years ago when the Tritons beat the Bows in five sets here. Wow. More on Vatan Janus, bioengineering. And he's really going to be missed. Yeah, absolutely. Come up with some great defensive plays tonight. And some assists as well. Yeah, his work in out-of-system situations yep. has been brilliant. Yeah, the Tritons are flowing tonight. There's no... I've never seen them play such good transition volleyball off of digs. The last two points going to the Bows. You had the Jazz Galloway kill his seventh, and then followed by a Kaoni Thim service ace his third. It's a four-point lead. Bows lost the first set after having a set point. They fell 27 to 25. First set went the Tritons away. So did the second, 25 to 21. There was a 7-0 scoring run. Long service run for Jim Garrison to turn things in the Tritons' favor in set two. Also good blocking from UC San Diego in the first to pop them up. Another great serve. Sure fun. So and patient. Pass the block. Yeah, hit past the block and such a patient. I love how patient he's being on his approach right now. Wasn't that money set? Super tight, but just high, hard, and snap it to a corner. Sherfon has 13 kills, one off a team high, one off a match high. Sebastian Laura has 14. Brett Persley coming in for the serving sub role. And overzealous with that service try. I go back to one stat <laughs> that I cannot believe. And I know the Bows fans that, that are watching this on our stream in Honolulu in the islands. Four aces, that is it. Yeah, that's for a Bows team that averages 2.08 aces per set and five match point surface. And the only one that's absolutely been getting their serve going at all is them right now on the Hawaii side. And that, and that shows with a, just another missed serve. Jim 
Garrison. Now, he had a service error with the first set point in the first set. He, oh, for he did. The but Good. then he had a run, too, then so he, he made up run. for it. He did. He's back to the bench. No room for mistakes for Hawaii. This is Todd. <laughs> the Bows bail out in three. The Tritons with a hallmark win take out their nemesis, ending a four-match losing streak against them and ending a four-match losing streak on the season. And UC San Diego on senior night sizzles in spectacular fashion. Unbelievable play by the Tritons tonight. They played amazing transitional offense, were able to really stop Hawaii at the net blocking and serve out of this world. Unfortunately, Hawaii could not get their serve going tonight and, and struggled a little bit offensively. Looking ahead to next week really quickly, the Bows will have the three seed in the conference tournament, and they are going to play UC Santa Barbara, the six seed, because UCSB lost while this match was going on against CSUN. So CSUN, the five seed, the Tritons, the four seed, and UC San Diego on senior night finishes the season, at least the regular season, strong as they win a big one. That's three wins against the Bows in four years. For Kirsten Olsen, I'm Brian Fenley. Thanks so much to our producers, Kamaya Johnson, Delina Pham, Zeke Ramirez, our technical director, Josh Rose, KJ Dill, and the rest of our great team. I'm Brian Fenley. Thanks so much for tuning in and a Triton win in three sets.